So do we need tougher measures against uh, Islamist extremists? I'm not sure that we need specifically to adapt the powers and measures that we already have in place to deal with, let's say, um, the selling of drugs to younger people in public places or um, the ways in which gangs try to recruit younger people or approach younger people. So I think that we already have a number of measures in place to deal with antisocial behaviors and with recruitment techniques that could actually lead younger individuals, especially, onto a slippery slope. If we start creating brand new rules that are targeted just at the Muslim community in order to deal with the Islamist threat, I think that we risk isolating them even further. What would you like to see in the report? I would like to see a recognition of a lot of the work that's already taking place. So the Muslim community overall is extremely diverse and the issues that they're already talking about in terms of radicalization vary even within a few miles of one another. So they're all dealing with very different issues if they are engaging in this prevent work. Um, the types of programs that we see range from teaching parents how to work with their children in terms of internet safety to actually dealing with individuals who have been in terrorist organizations and have come out and working with them to develop counter, um, counter narratives and and have conversations with younger people who might be considering going, going down that road. So there's a great variety in terms of the techniques and processes that we already see in the community. I think that we, what I would really like to see come out of the report is a recognition that there isn't a short-term solution to this. So I think that the programs need to be assessed in terms of their short-term viability and impact, medium-term and long-term. Most of the solutions will be long-term. It's about building up relationships and building up trust with communities. I would also like to see issues of community cohesion come back into the prevent agenda and prevent policy in order to work further upstream to look not just at Muslim communities and the Islamist threat itself, but to look at community cohesion as a whole and issues of identity, because those seem to be the main um, weaknesses building up these ideas of identity or challenging the identities that younger people may, might be trying on as they move towards violent radicalization. Finally, I think that the government is going to struggle to actually clearly identify indicators of success. And we see this as a problem with just about every counter-terror policy, and especially prevent-related counter-terror policy um, across Europe. It's very difficult to measure success unless somebody has actually started engaging in the planning process. And then we have the security services stop an attack. But what are the indicators of success, of success further upstream? So, so before someone becomes radicalized, if they're just starting to consider it, and maybe um, indicators of success in terms of the activities that can engage communities so that people don't even get to the point of radicalization in the first place. So what can we use to measure success? We're going to have to understand all of our activities and all of our funding and all of our engagement in those terms. And it's very, very difficult to pin down what a successful prevent policy looks like. Would it be helpful to have a clear definition of what uh, ideology or that it is an ideology that's Islamist extremism? Yes, I've been um, very happy to see the change in narrative coming from the government um, where instead of just talking about the Muslim community they're constantly saying that this is about the Islamist ideology which is a very particular and very specific approach um, to, to um, the Muslim belief system and, and Muslims around the world would say that they do not believe in that. That, that is an extreme way of being um, a Muslim. So um, I think that instead of just making this about ideology, we need, do need to think about ideology and it's useful in terms of drawing a boundary around who we're talking about and what we're talking about in terms of the messages that will come out from these individuals, the messages that they're trying to purport. But what we're also talking about is behavior and we already have a lot of practices and procedures in place to deal with recruitment behaviors, to deal with trying to pull people into crime, to deal with hate speech and to deal with racist comments. So I think we need to look at what's already working in terms of those behaviors and understand that we also have to have a working knowledge of the ideology in order to, to target the interventions more thoroughly. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you.